What do you want with me? I've never actually broken any of your stupid laws in front of you. I want you to go out with me. What? What? Where I... You know, Disney, I'll be real with you, it took 46 seconds for me to already fall in love with the Owl House. That is actually a record right there. You managed to make this show with these great characters and great world and it's just so damn charming. I genuinely love how this series is done. I already had high hopes for this series from just the first poster from some years ago and you guys met that and then some. You guys kicked off the new decade pretty strong and that's very commendable. Really. This will make me rich. The series is created by Donna Terrace, who worked on stuff such as Gravity Falls, the new DuckTales reboot, and Tangled the series. So you can definitely get a familiar off-color charm from this show, particularly with some of the more edgier jokes, which is pretty nice. The premise is about a young girl who gets transported to a magical place called the Boiling Isles and wants to learn witchcraft. Definitely has that YA novel feel to it like Harry Potter and such. Hell, the titles of the episode reflect that, but doesn't blow itself by making it seem more important than it actually is. It knows what it wants to do and it accomplishes that to a T. It does have a message in the first episode that being weird is perfectly okay, which I think can resonate with many people. We're pretty weird in our own way. Hell, I talk to you all through my mind. So I think people will enjoy that this series has some meat to it. Though some might not like how on the nose the message can come across. I mean, I noticed it, but it wasn't too bothered by it. So maybe that'll be the consensus overall. It's just, you might notice the message and it might feel a little hammered, but everything else is so good that you don't care. This does a good job in establishing what it wants to accomplish. It really does. That was pretty clever. <laughs> for a human. The characters, as per usual, are the main driving force of this series with how they go well with each other. Luz is a fun oddball. She loses herself to fantasy, even to a point it causes her to be isolated from everyone in the normal world. But it doesn't bring her down. She has such a high infectious spirit that you're easily on her side whenever she's on screen, especially with how weird she can be. Oh, happy dagger, give me death! <laughs> <laughs> Now, for the final anatomically correct touch, spider breath. <laughs> you think that's an impressive trick? Take a look at this. Bleep, bloop, bleep. <laughs> There's Ida the Owl Lady. She's this rebellious witch who basically teaches Luz about witchcraft. Her attitude can be pretty fun with how much she just loves doing her own thing. She's pretty badass with how she weaves spells and can pretty much have control of a situation. There's clearly some indication of a past with her, so you get a hint of mystery with her. You would think that maybe she doesn't care for the others, but you see she has a soft side to her with how she treats Luz and her roommate King, who basically was the king of demons but lost his powers. He's this cute little doofus that you couldn't really hate. He just has these delusions of grandeur and it's honestly just fun and cute. These three share the basic trait of not fitting in so you can see a strong companionship build with them. Oh, look at us loose. King and I don't have much in this world. We only have each other. So if that dumb crown is important to him, it's important to me. And besides, us weirdos have to stick together, you know? The world of the Boiling Isles offers a lot. It's like Harry Potter if magic completely got coked up and let loose. You got some of these creatures that just look so otherworldly, though it is odd that giraffes were a part of this world but got banished. Every myth you humans have is caused by a little of our world leaking into yours. A griffin! I knew it! Yep, griffins, vampires, giraffes. Giraffes? Oh yeah, we banished those guys. A bunch of freaks. Okay. Though the world might come off as a bit childish with how it works sometimes, like I said, the big message of the first episode was pretty on the nose since there were characters getting arrested for being weird. Of all things to get arrested for, that's pretty stupid and like, come on, a kid thinks of that. 
It's just sort of minor, and you would chalk it up to just sort of first episode woes. Like I said, everything else manages to be so unique that it's not too bad. I hate everything you're saying right now. The animation definitely is a plus for this series. It's reminiscent of Gravity Falls mixed with some star verses and a tinge of anime fluidity. That actually makes this a nice experience to watch. Certain moments work well whenever action is needed or good timing of jokes. The look and design of creatures adds a uniqueness to it that makes it stand out from other animated fantasy shows. Boiling Isles looks amazing and the intricate details of it makes you wish you could visit it yourself. The humor even adds to the experience as well with how the characters play off each other and the world around them. It can be downright hilarious with how they deliver their jokes, some of which can also be pretty dark, but let's face it, it's always funny when Disney goes dark. Hoot hoot! Password please! Ah! We got no time for this, Hootie. Let us in. Alright, alright, jeez! You never want to have any fun! Oops. Ah! Ow! Oh, I hate it when that happens. This series is Disney at its best. The characters have a great likability to them with a good sense of friendship. The animation and overall design is probably the most imaginative I've seen Disney in a long time. Going more off color with their humor is definitely one of the great things to come from Disney as they progress and this series was no exception. It can be pretty hilarious, honestly. The message could use some work in the delivery, but it's not that bad. I think with some more episodes, we'll see them get that down. It could even be first season blues, honestly. But regardless, this series is among Disney's best in their off-brand department and is a great way to kick off the new decade. But that's just a thought. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.